This is not our first time to do this. No, it's not. It's, it's not my first time. Ago. Yeah, I did it. But now we're welcoming Gary. Uh, the last time I did this show, um, on the way to load in my two pieces of gear, I fucking fell down really? on this really slippery, like, board thing or whatever. And it was super embarrassing, and I tried to act like it didn't hurt. But son of a bitch in pants. My elbow was all hurting. And Today would have been a high probability day to fall down, because we're parked on an angle like this. Yeah. And when we woke up in our bunks, I, I knew we were on an angle. Yeah. But I didn't know how steep it was. And I'm on the top. So whenever I jump out, I hit the ground. You guys are next to the and I'm like, Whoa, here we go. Yeah. Have we started? Uh, that was that was a cool opening. Like, yeah, I, I agree. can do the opening. No, I, I like that start. Alright, we'll, we'll just do that. Uh, since we last talked, it was like six, seven months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys have been super busy. It's been crazy busy. Well, we celebrated our 25th anniversary as Bowling for Soup and started this 25th anniversary tour, which is essentially trying to cover the entire United States, which we do in segments because we're also dads. Yeah. So it's important to note that we limit our time out of town. We try to do it to 10 days is really where we kind of start the limit. And then depending on the routing, we'll let it go a couple of more days. But really, I mean, two weeks is like max. Absolutely. Yeah. Part of that's part of that's like we need to be home because we have families. Yeah. And part of that's we're also old and falling apart physically. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's the thing. We had a t we had a discussion. I guess it's been about a year ago. And uh, Gary said, uh, "Yeah, man, I just don't know." Like he goes, well, "Can we cuss on this?" Oh yeah, it's fine. He goes, "Fucking playing 15 shows in a row and playing three hours a night, it it just kills my arms. So I just I yeah, need a break. Or I'm 40. I'm yeah. not 16 yeah. anymore." So you know? I go, "I go. You're saying you want to take a day off?" So since then, we've started taking these things called days off. Have you heard about these? This is my day off and I'm here. We have never had one of those yeah. until this summer. And we have had the best time. We just go to a swimming pool. We drink a lot. Yeah. The reason we don't ever take days off previously is because mm -hmm. we want to maximize, hit the road, get home as soon as we can. Yeah. But now we're older and like, like I said, falling apart. So break. you need it's a day off. But it's fun. Who yeah. would have ever thought that? Yeah. <laughs> Plus it's economics. Like you're, you still have the bus. You still, your crew is getting paid whether they're working or not. Because yeah. it's amount of time, not amount of shows. Okay. So, you know, it's so. Yeah, that's why we never took a day off. It's, right. it's expensive. It's Economics and then just, again, But it's also home. not only fun, it's good for morale. It is. It's, a, it's just a good day for us all to. We always do. take the entire crew out to a nice meal. So, like, we'll, we'll stay in the pool all day and we take everybody out for a, a steak. Or if they don't want steak, they could have, um, they could have chicken. Pasta. Fish, There's no vegetables, fish. sure. Vegetarian. They can uh, just have a, a liquid dinner if they want. One hundred percent. Yeah. No, we do buy and we buy all of their. Well, being in our band or crew means you don't, you never have expenses when you're out here. So they they all know how to take advantage of it yeah. in a good way. Uh, did you guys ever get burned out on tour? Um, we had a time around in 2013 where I think. Um, well, I don't think. No, this happened. I mean, I was going through a divorce. Eric had just had a divorce. Gary had a new baby at home. Um, he had started a new career. Those times, it started to get a little bit... There, there's also some, like, probably band career dynamics, trajectory or whatever. Like, things were doing what we used to do. It wasn't just... We didn't great. feel like the business was as good. We didn't want to do the thing where we just run it into the ground and just burn out. We talked about that last time. Yeah. Like, it was getting to the point where like we were going to be like the, we go to a venue and like 100 people are going to be there like 50 people are gonna and there's be, nothing wrong with that we, we've always said we'll do it as long as it's fun yeah and it was still fun but there was just like does it make sense yep yeah that was hard so what we did was we just took some time off when we came back a year later uh and no no international touring for like two years so we came back to just do some one-off shows it was, we just had this fire, you know, yeah. and then, and then it that was fun again. It was it fun. Made sense. And that yeah. started the ball rolling down to where you fast forward to Rob joining the band and like breathing this insane new life into us. But yeah, that's really the only time. I mean, you know, you would have shows back in the day. I mean, we, we had one show that we did in Toledo. It, it just was just the worst circumstances. Like they didn't have a working bathroom at the place, and so we were on a, a shitty bus, and it was like raining that day. And there's nothing around. It was before yeah. Uber, so you couldn't go anywhere. Yeah. There's nothing to eat. 
You couldn't go shit or use a restroom. Yeah. It's raining. Our bus was leaking. Into, oh, my, into my bunk and then our sound guy's bunk. Like, literally leaking. You can't even go by plastic at that point. No. It, it's just one done, thing after another done. to the point where you're defeated. Yeah. And we, we just, honestly, we said, I think that was around that time. Yeah. Where we looked at each other and we're just like, man, what the fuck are we doing out here? You know, like, what are we doing? Yeah. We're away from our children and yeah. miserable. Like, yeah. what are we doing? We're, you have so much going on, and both of you. You've got this podcast, which we're you're kind of set up for the podcast right now. Mm-hmm. Um, with Chuck and Cheese. Yes. Uh, you've got acoustic shows going on. Yes. Uh, where's time management coming in? Or did that kind of play into like we need to take a break, we need to take these days off, and that was part of time management. You guys are uh, recording I, and everything. We lead different lives, so like he, you know, Gary has a career outside of this that he does, and then you know we have this podcast together. You know, I decided early on, I'm going to have a career in the entertainment industry. So that means in order to make a good living, I've got to do 12 jobs. You can't, so you can't just be the singer of Bowling Pursuit and feed your family and make a, you know, and and pay for a house and shit. You've got to go out and do other stuff. And so, you know, again, like while he went to realty school or whatever, I, I became a voice actor, started doing all of that shit. And you know, now it works out because we've got, I've got my stuff going on, he's got his stuff going on, uh, Rob has his own thing going on in his world, Chris. Bat and Penning. Bat and Penning, and uh, he runs a venue uh, in Pennsylvania, and, you know, it's just based on, like, so we all just lead different lives, you know. Um, there gets to be a point where there's multiple things going on, and you realize whether it's wife, band, family, business, games, uh, meaning kids' games, this yeah. or that. There's just so much stuff going on that you live and die by the calendar. Yeah. And if it's not in the calendar, it doesn't exist. Right. And the problem is sometimes things exist to other people, yeah. but they're not on your calendar, and you just start having to communicate to other people, it needs to be on my calendar. I had, to blow, off, I had to blow off a couple shows uh, for a dance recital. Yeah, so it was you like, did. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a, that's a, it, I forgot. I got lost in the time management thing. Thanks for reeling it back in, this guy. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. You've got to be calendar driven. You've got to train your wife to be calendar driven. You've got to train your managers to put it on your calendar, not just theirs. You know, like I, I, I live and die by my Google calendars or whatever, and I've got an app that keeps it all together. You don't put it on there. And so we actually had this happen like recently. This summer. This summer where we scheduled a show, big show. Like, I mean, it was a good payday. We needed to be there. Like we were like... You know, high and shows come things. in so far in advance. I mean, they're six months, yeah. nine months, a year right. in advance. So, like, by the time they're coming around, we don't remember that conversation. Yeah. Hey, do you want to do this show? Yeah, yeah. it needs to be on the calendar. You could ask us right now, like, hey, you guys open November, or whatever. We're not open in November. We're booking wow. next summer right now. You know? oh. So, so that's the thing. So, we just had a show just fucking slip through the cracks or whatever. Totally and forgot about it. Totally forgot about it, and we were a week away. And it was the day before his daughter's birthday party. It, and far it, away in a different state. And I'm yeah. like, uh, I got to get home, guys. Yeah, and so it, it definitely was like a, a thing. Where it was just, and I'm like, dude, I'm fine like flying in, flying back out. Let's fly and that, back the, the explanation of that is like, it, that doesn't sound that difficult. But the reason we picked the day was because every other... Saturday and Sunday in the summer, we were gone or yeah. this or that. It's yeah. like, this is the only day it works. Yeah. And now a week before, it's like, hey guys, this show wasn't on the calendar. And I'm going to have to call my wife and go, I'm in Chicago the night before. <laughs> I'm not home. Yeah. Like, we picked this day and yeah. we weren't even in Chicago. We were like outside of Chicago. Yeah. So like getting us home was a whole thing. So we were just like, well, this is the, this is the punchline to the whole thing. We couldn't cancel because Real Big Fish was on it as well. And they had already canceled. Because Aaron had a wedding to do. Okay, so you guys were like... We were like, dude, if we cancel this, like, we're completely fucking these promoters. Yeah. We're like, so, anyway, we did it. It ended up being great, yeah. you know. I mean, he uh, was obviously exhausted at his daughter's birthday party, but he made it through. And yeah, I did the thing. We played the show. I hung out for a bit, uh, got an Uber, went to the airport at 3 in the morning, sat there till check-in, flew home was exhausted and yeah. uh, we did a birthday party. That's great. an amazing dad story. Yeah. He just stayed up all night. Like I was waking, my flight was two hours later and I'm like, we're roommates on the road. So I'm waking up and he's just there on his phone, in his hoodie, his bag packed at his feet. You can tell he's got like three alarms set in case he falls asleep and shit. 
and uh, he just hit fucking trooper right there. Made got, it. got home, got my car, went and picked up uh, donuts and kolaches, showed up to where it was. My daughter never had any idea. She's two, you know, it's her oh. second birthday. Yeah. But, you know, I'm there for that. All of our friends were like, oh, how was tour this summer? I'm like, great, I just got home like two hours ago. I'm like, what are you doing here? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, well, you don't miss your daughter's birthday Priorities, party. Yeah. yeah. And connected to that, uh, this tour got booked. And I had forgotten to put my family vacation on the calendar. Mm. So we were actually supposed to finish this tour in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, in a couple of days. Well, I leave on a Disney cruise in two days. Again, I was just like, dude, I didn't put it on the calendar. I fucked up. This is me. Tell our manager or whatever. So we play Cleveland tomorrow. I'm going straight to the airport and getting on a 6 a.m. flight to fly to New York to get on a boat with my wife and son. You're just meeting up with them? Yep, and just going on Jeez. vacation. Yeah. So to wrap it all up, you live and die by the calendar. Calendar, yeah, that's, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Times have definitely changed since you guys started a band. What advice would you give to like upcoming bands, podcasters, you want to get into like the industry, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Yeah, I mean, well, those are two different worlds. I mean, you know, I, again, you know this, I mean, it's just all about social media. It's like, yeah. you know, when you're, when you're talking to a young band, bands want to tour, they want to get out there and they do this. And the, the first advice that I would give to any young band, do not tour. Don't do that. That's stupid. Nobody wants your dumb band from this dumb town to come to their dumb town and play their dumb club. That's For 15 just, bucks. There's, and and nobody, nobody wants that yeah, because yeah. there's no, it's, that's, it's just not a thing. So you play, you develop your market regionally now. And you and you go out, and then you trade shows with bands. So if you meet a band in the city next next to you that draws, you trade yeah. you trade shows, and then you build your social media, and that is all about content, content, content. Hey, that's how you found me, and then I was like, want to do something, and that's how we hooked up. Yeah, social media. I think it's start the the band and the podcast or whatever it is. The, those are kind of different. You start by playing whatever shitty instrument your aunt has or your you know uncle has and that's how you learn to play you don't have to go out and buy the best gear you practice you find friends you get good that's the first thing for musicians mm -hmm. practice get good have fun and if it's a podcast or photography or whatever it is you want to do don't you don't have to go get the best gear learn the basics get good and figure out if you really It'll like go it. from that yeah. Dude, we had a photographer friend in here earlier uh hurley hurley Jim. Jim. He carries one camera. You see yeah. all these people with like 16 cameras, and he takes the fucking best picture. He was just on tour with Rob Thomas. Yeah, yeah exactly. So your, your first interviews are going to be trash. Your first shows are going to be trash. Your first photos are going to be trash. Like, go get good, but start. Don't be afraid. Get out there and do it. Yep. Be but honest you don't, with yourself. You don't have to have the best gear. If you can learn to be good with shitty gear, once you can Imagine. afford to get good gear, you'll be yeah. better. Uh, you guys have had some like viral news that has happened so far. Yeah. Uh, I texted you about it like as soon as I found out. Uh, you were at the Leeds Reading Festival, and you uh, did an impromptu rendition of "Girl All the Bad Guys Want," but you guys revamped the lyrics. Yeah. Did you think that would be news, and how that idea came about? Okay, so here's what really happened. The BBC came calling. And the BBC is the is a national radio station in the UK. Yeah. Like basically, it's like getting played on the BBC is like getting to be a band on Saturday Night Live. Like it's the biggest shit. And like every time it gets played, our song gets played on there. Like it just millions. It's it's, it's ridiculous yeah. the exposure. So they they've been great to us over the years. I mean, you know, they haven't gotten. You know, they don't play every song, but they definitely have been great fans of Girl the Bad Guys Want. So we're going to do Reading and Leeds, 25th anniversary. They came to us. They're like, hey, how about an update? And the guy wrote, uh, the radio guy sent us some lyrics. At first, I'm like, okay, I want to do it, but I'm going to rewrite this. Like, I want it to be, like, way funnier. And you know, then I just thought about it. I'm just, you know what? This is the radio guy. This is his bit. I mean, really, I'm just lucky to be a part of it. I, I, should, take the I should just go in there and do that. But the thing is, is that I started the thing, and me and Rob went in there, and it was hot. They didn't have it. We had to borrow guitars. He didn't have a strap. There was no stand. My glasses were fogging up. I couldn't see the sheet. He had never, he didn't even know that we were doing that, because 
that's the way that I like to do business is I like them to be super hey, Gary, surprised. You're doing an interview. Exactly. It's super surprising all the time. Keep summer toast. Yeah, and that's awesome. fun, right? Like yeah. and, and that, but then they're spontaneous and funny and shit, right? Anyway, we go and they we do it and um, I I say like, hey, I didn't write these lyrics, like this is the this guy should get credit for this, whatever, and they cut all that out. So then people are just like and we know Youngblood, like we met him on Warp Tour and he's a good kid and, but he's, he's I met I met him uh Warp Tour twenty eighteen, you guys closed out Warped Tour. Mm. And uh he was like the the biggest energy whenever I like I first met him. I didn't he's, even know who the fuck he was. Yeah, he's a good he was kid. He's just some young kid and he walked in. Uh, but yeah, anyway, but no, it, it I had no idea that was gonna do what it did. But you know, that just goes to show you what the reach of that station is. Doing something as silly as updating, you know, the lyrics of this song that came out in 2003 or whatever. You know, it opens you up to all kinds I mean, of darts and fucking arrows and shit. But we didn't really get hit with many. Still, it's so big that it's still on my social media. That was over a month ago, and like daily. Yeah, I'm still getting stuff on, on like these like Reddit channels and all this other stuff. It's popping yeah. up. Like, yeah, I actually know a statistic about it that I'm not supposed to know, but it was a really big video for them too. Do you guys plan on, on re-recording that with updated lyrics at some point? No, the, so the first thing that I did when I got home, I was like, you know what, this would be really easy to do. We already have the music done for the thing, and you know, like I'll just, we'll just update the thing, we'll go in there and just do it. And then I was like, why? It, that seems silly. Like, why not just let it live out there like that? It's already done. It's already done. We've already done it. Because then you, like, open yourself up to, well, your version isn't as funny. Or, like, why are you doing UK references? Or why are you doing this? And, like, you, you know, you guys are milking this thing. It just didn't seem, it didn't seem like something that we should, it, it, it just seems we got out of it what we needed, you know? Going back to the UK, and you guys are going on tour in 2020. Yes. With Simple Plan. Yep. And Not Your Girlfriends. Yep. Um, those shows are selling out like super quick. Dude, we're at 69% oh, right Summer now. Summer 69. On all of them. Yeah, so we first took Simple Plan to the US and to the UK in 2003. They've got a new record coming out. This is part of our 25th year celebration, you know, and uh, so it, 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 we threw caution to the wind. We just hey, you guys want to come over? And uh, do this with us, and they're stoked, and we're stoked. I just saw them on Sunday. They were here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's different for them because they, they, you know, they're not. It's it's our show, so they're having to go. They're going to dumb down production and shit like that. And they're playing a shorter set, but at the same time, they're going to be, you know, in front of a shitload of people. And it's, you know, I am so happy that they're doing it. Honestly, it's a lot of hits in one night if you yeah. just take the two bands. From the UK back to the US, you played the last Warped Tour in Atlantic City. We did. Saw you there. It was really hot. It was miserable. It was sticky. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, what uh, what was that experience like playing the last one? And you guys also played the last cross country one, closing closing that out. Yeah, it was too. important to us to be a part of both of them. That last one, the last tour, you know, I mean, we none of us had any idea that he was going to do the thing. That one was bittersweet. I mean, it's it's one of those things where you like you, it's fucking miserable. It sucks. It's hot. And it's so much fun. Yeah, yeah. it's so much fun. It's like it's a party, and you're with your friends, and we have bands that we're literally family with, like you know. And I, we've never done anything with them but Warped but Tour. But Tour. That's awesome. Yeah, that was important, and we did it, and that was great. Yeah, the last one though in Atlantic City. I mean, like, I, I how would we have not been a part of that? You know, it's one of those things where it was a fucking hard day. All the crews were just our, miserable. Our tour manager walked 18 miles that Jeez. day. Yeah, it's on his, he, he has it on his, you know, tracker. I believe we were, we were in the same boat. Probably not that much, but, you know. Yeah. And then the first day there was a, uh, storm that happened yeah and they evacuated 26,000 people yeah yeah we Which weren't there for that insane. you know my girls were there I think the best way you, you hit the nail on the head bittersweet you know yeah. yeah the thing about it is is like I I miss that thing I miss like warp tour and saying it and being there and doing it and like and it did so much for us and we're oh appreciative God. of it Jesus you know? Christ. yeah and and I remember the first time we were in we were in um in oh england. southampton we were in southampton england when we got the word that hey we're doing our first work tour and we were all so happy and excited and you know what i mean shout out to kevin lyman who is still the sweetest human being of all time all these tours he's done all of these bands he's held and he still picks up the phone when you call. He still texts you back right away. Like, I could email that guy right now, and I guarantee you, he would. I'd have an email back in three minutes. Yeah. 
Last question for you guys. What's going on in 2020 with Bowling for Soup? I'm stoked, actually. Uh, we, we're off for a couple of three months. We're going to we're gonna hang out a bunch. And um, what else are we going to do? Oh, that's pretty much it. Civil Point mm -hmm. Tour? We'll no, see, that's coming yeah. up in February. In February. Uh, yeah. And then um, what else are we doing? Well, we'll have new summer stuff. We just haven't put it together yet That's for correct. BFS. Yep. Uh, we're still doing the Rockstar Dad Show. Yep, Rockstar Dad Show. There goes the movies. Like, all Here. that shit's happening every week. All the time. Yeah. yeah, take your kids to Chuck E. Cheese. The pizza's delicious. It's a really good time to be in our band. And uh, But again, new music at least every four or six weeks or whatever. And super excited about that. And, um, you know, no stopping. You know, no stopping. Uh, all that stuff linked up below. In the description, this is on the YouTube channel. But this has been the Pop Punk Dad with the guys. Bowling for Soup. Always amazing talking to you. Rockstar Dad Show. Check it out. Favorite podcast besides his. Awesome. Hey guys, now that we're at the end of the video, thank you for like, commenting, and subscribing. You can check out daily blogs on thepoppunkdad.com, which features daily reviews and interviews from awesome bands. Head on over to the Pop Punk Dad official merch shop where you can buy cool things like that right there. It helps the channel out and lets me know that you love me. I have a weekly podcast called the Pop Punk Dadcast, which is on SoundCloud and iTunes now. Please subscribe. While you're at it, cruise around and check out other content on this channel. You can check out all my social medias, my IG, my FB, and my Twitter, at the Pop Punk Dad. And above all else, guys, stay pop punk. Later.